I would like to ask about marijuana and CBD. Uh, this is a discussion that I think five years ago would have ventured into the realm of illegal, but now yeah. in many places, not all, medical marijuana is approved or is legal. And certainly it's in widespread use. Certainly not recommending people do it. I have my own thoughts about uh, marijuana CBD. I've been fortunate, I suppose, that I don't particularly like marijuana or CBD. I don't even know if I've ever tried CBD. Um, first of all, does marijuana disrupt the depth of sleep, the architecture of sleep? Um, and if so, as with alcohol and caffeine, does when you uh, ingest it or when it's in your bloodstream, does relative to when you go to sleep, does that play mm -hmm. an important role? So does marijuana disrupt sleep? Yeah, it, it does. And there's a pretty good amount of data on, so we can break uh, sort of cannabis down into two of its key ingredients. We've got THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, and we've got CBD. And CBD is sort of the, the less psych, what's it, what we think of as the non-psychoactive component. In other words, when you take CBD, you don't get high. If you take THC, you can get high. That's the psychoactive part of the equation. Are both considered sedatives in the technical sense? Uh, no, they're not. Um, neither of them have that class right now. THC can seems to speed up the time with which you fall asleep. But again, if you look at the, the electrical brainwave signature of your falling asleep with and without that THC, it's not going to be an ideal fit. So you could argue it's non-natural, but many people use THC for that fact because they find it difficult to fall asleep and it can speed the onset of at least non-consciousness, I guess is the best way of describing it. But there are problems with THC and there are twofold. The first is that it too, but through different mechanisms, seems to block REM sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people when they're using will tell me, look, you know, I, I definitely, I was dreaming, I don't remember, you know, many of my dreams. And then when they stop using uh, THC, let's say I was having, you know, just crazy, crazy dreams. And the reason is because there is a rebound mechanism REM sleep is very clever and alcohol is the same way in this sense. It's the same homeostatic mechanism. Some people will tell me, look, if I have a bit of a wild Friday night with some alcohol, you know, maybe I'll sleep late into the next morning and I'll just have these really intense dreams. So, and I thought I wasn't having any REM sleep. Well, the way it works is that it's during in the middle of the night, really, um, when alcohol blocks your REM sleep. And your brain is smart. It understands how much REM sleep you should have had, how much REM sleep you have not because the alcohol has been in the system. And finally, in those early morning hours when you're getting through to sort of, you know, six, REM seven, like eight a.m., all of a sudden your brain not only goes back to having the same amount of REM it would have had, it does that. Plus it tries to get back all of the REM sleep that it's lost. Mm -hmm. Does it get back all of the REM sleep? No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It never gets back all of the REM sleep, but it tries. And so you have these really intense periods of REM sleep, hence you have really intense, bizarre dreams. And that's what happens also with THC. You build up this pressure for REM sleep, this debt for REM sleep. Will you ever pay it back? It doesn't seem as though you get back everything that you lost, but will you get back some of it? Yes, the brain will start to devour more because it's been starved of REM sleep for so long. But one of the bigger problems with THC that we worry about is withdrawal dependency. So as you start to use THC for sleep, there can be a, a dependency tolerance. So you start to need more to get the same sleep benefit. And when you stop using, you usually get a very severe rebound insomnia. And in fact, it's so potent that it's typically part of the clinical um, withdrawal profile from THC, from cannabis. And Sleep there's anxiety is, withdrawal. I, I've, right. um, I, I, you know, I don't uh, ask anybody to change their behavior. We just, as you said, we try and inform people about what the science says and, and let them make choices for themselves. People who are regular uh, pot smokers, if you, that many will insist they're not addicted. And, and in, maybe indeed they don't actually follow the profile of classical addiction. I don't know. I'm guessing some do, some don't. But um, if you ask them, well, what if I took away all marijuana consumption 
for, I don't know, two weeks, that thought scares many of them. And many of them will experience intense anxiety without marijuana, which speaks to perhaps not addiction, but a certain kind of dependency. Right. Um, and again, I, I, you know, I know many pot smokers, um, some of whom uh, have jobs that are, that are quite high performing and they, and they manage. Here in Berkeley, um, I don't know any of those. Yeah, no, none of those, right. Um, 